Testing, testing, one, two, three, and we're up and running. A very, very, very good afternoon to everyone. It's a lovely, lovely, splendid day out there, nice and bright. I hope you're keeping nice and active and staying safe in, in anything what you're doing, guys. So, once again, a massive thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks to all my new um, subscribers. And cheers for sharing all my stuff. I'm absolutely fine, doing really well. Um, today I want to talk to you about a little bit about what I used to get up to, a few of my old tricks back in the day. Um, but it's probably in the early 90s, probably around 95, 97, from the early 90s anyway, it went up to the 2000s. Um, so basically, as, as many of you lot know, I used to have a breakdown truck, I had a lorry with a high ab on the back, um, and I was doing breakdowns, so I was picking cars up on motorways, I was um, buying stolen recovered cars um, and ringing them. I was up to all sorts. Um, and I also had a yard on Mollison Avenue, which is in Enfield, so it was on an industrial estate. Bruno's being a bit vocal today. Yeah, it was on an industrial estate, and um, where I was doing banger racing, we used to build our bangers in the yard, um, so yeah it was all in there and we also built a smelting machine um what that is it's a, it's a, it's basically a burner which burns aluminium um so we call it a, it's called a smelter so yeah we built a smelter um, and it held four barrels um and i was buying all that well quite a few alley alley barrels um off of different people giving them like a pound each for the barrels putting them through the smelter and running running alley in each week and let me tell you, I was earning a right nice few quid then back in the early 90s. You're talking like two and a half, three grand a week, and then days it was good money. So um, anyway, one morning, I had a scanner. So them days, you, you could buy scanners from Tandys and different um, electronic places, and you could tune into your local police station. A lot of people used to do that, um, just buy a scanner. The background, the music in the background is um, Studio One Revival, old reggae, because um, I've always loved reggae. But yeah, going back onto it, anyway, you could buy a scanner from Townies and you could just, you could tune into your local police station or your fire station, the ambulance service, uh, basically anything that had a frequency, you could tune into it. Um, but lately, um, over the last few years, the police have got on it and they've changed their frequency, so you can't buy, you can't tune into them now from no scanner. Um, I'm not too sure if that's been done yet, but <clears throat> I'm not too sure. But anyway, what's happened was, was I had a house, I had a three bedroom house in Enfield and it had a massive front garden and you could drive in the front garden straight out to the back garden. And on the side of the house, I built a garage out of breeze blocks um, and put a corrugated roof on it. So, um, you know, I was heavily into motors, banger racing, trucks, vans, lorries, ringing cars, stealing cars, stripping cars importing exporting everything to do with everything to do with cars that's all i've ever done all my life um so on this one occasion one morning it was around about nine o'clock i was out in the garden um taking the engine and gearbox out of a transit van um which had just been delivered to me that morning um because i was buying i was buying the uh, stolen transit vans i know it's illegal but you know this is this is what this is my past and this is what i used to get up to so i was buying um stolen vans and um what people was doing, they was getting up early, early in the morning, um, and waiting outside like local supermarkets and, and local shops, and waiting for the delivery driver to get out their vans. A lot of them used to leave their keys in it, and these these boys would be in the van, and bang, they'd be gone, uh, ringing me up and saying to me, "Right, we got another van for you." So that was a regular thing, and I was cutting and breaking probably at that time about five transits a week, and taking the engines and gearboxes, prop shaft, running gear. And, and selling it um, to a guy over in North London at a breakers yard, and he was exporting it out to Nigeria or South Africa or somewhere like that. But yeah, I was thick, thick, thick in, into it, um, and it, it make, puts a smile on my face, you know, because when I think about the, the things I used to get up to, it's absolutely fucking bonkers, man. So anyway, this this time, um, I had one bolt to undo, which was um, on the cross member of a full transit underneath, so the engine mountings, all the cables, the, all the hoses, um, everything was unbolted, it was just a cross member holding the engine in. And I, ha I had a high ab and a chain uh, around the engine mountings, lifting the engine out of the transit. So I just had to get underneath it on my little roller thing and un undo one bolt. Um, but I had my scanner on inside my garage, um, listening. 
because I used to use it like a radio, like it was more fun, you know. You knew everything what was going on in your area at that time, and where I was tuned into Enfield Police Station, I lived in Enfield, it was exciting news, you know what I mean? I even like put it on a few times, and I heard a few names and a few addresses come up, um, and I quickly rang that person up and informed them that I just heard their name being uh, spoken about over the police radio, so it's fucking quality, it's quality. <clears throat> but anyway, so I'm out in the garage, I've got one bulk that I'm doing, all of a sudden I've heard my address coming up. I'm not going to say the full address, but the, the, the address was called Biddyford Road and it was Enfield Lock. So all of a sudden, it was probably around about 9.30, my lorry was out the front that was ready to um, take the van, because what I was doing, I'd take the engine and the boxes out of the vans and I'd put the shell, uh, the rolling chassis and the shell, on the back of my recovery lorry. And then I had someone over in North London in Tottenham in a breakers yard what would take the whole lot and um, strip it down, you know, and uh, sell the bits off of it. But that was another bloke who was buying the engine and boxes all together. So, yeah, I've, um, I'm underneath the lorry and all of a sudden I've heard my um, address going out. Biddyford Road, Biddyford Road, Joey Barnett, Joey Barnett, um, stolen van, stolen trucks. Um, get round there, get round there, basically. And um, I could, I had, I, I, I had, I was absolutely fucking dumbfounded. I was shocked. Like, I heard my name being called. I heard my address being called. And I, uh, I heard like backup saying they're en route and they're just around the corner from me. What a blessing in disguise. Um, so I quickly undone the bolt, ripped the engine out, which was up in the air anyway, and um, put the engine to one side, quickly winched the van up. This was in about, within about a minute. Quickly winched the van onto the back of my low loader on the back of my um, IV Co lorry and put the... Uh, and put it on the back of the lorry and I was gone. Um, but I wasn't stupid because what the police knew was where I used to, uh, or where the local scrapyard was. So basically I knew that they'd be waiting there for me if I wasn't at my address. Um, I quickly got the van onto the back of my lorry, got around the block, and as luck, as luck had it, just around the corner from me, my mate, Nutty Norman, he had a, a, he had a massive um, lorry garage where he's a diesel fitter and he had a massive, like, drive and a, a back garden, a front garden, it was like, like a plane hanger. And instead of going to the metal yard, I quickly jumped up, like went off route a little bit, done a few lefts, done a few rights, and I'd got into my mate's garage, um, and as luck had it, he was there, Norman. And I told him what happened, and he said, quick, 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 drive straight through, drive straight through, um, get the van off, get the van off the back of the lorry and cover it up. So we have done that. Um, but yeah. So a few minutes later, I thought I'd phone my missus up um, to see what was going on. And I phoned my missus up. I said, hello, I said, is there any activity? And she said, yeah. She said, the police are in your house now. Um, we're being raided. And I said, what, what we've been raided for? And, and she said, for stolen um, vehicle parts and uh, fans, trucks and lorries. Um, so I, just, just, like, I thought I'd drop this little story here, guys. That was like a close, close shave what I had. Do you know what I mean? I reckon within three minutes later, bang, they had to call me, bang to the rights, ripping the engine and box out. But if it weren't for that scanner, I'd have been absolutely gone, um, nicked. So yeah, that's, that's that one little story what I'd like, I, I thought I'd put out to you guys because it is a funny little story. And if, anyone, if anyone's around my age or born in the 70s or anything, uh, you'll, you'll all remember the scanners. But anyway, guys, here's another little thing what I've done. So this is at home now. So... Probably about two months ago, I asked my missus, I said, have you got any, um, got any yeast? And when you go to the shop next, can you buy some pure orange? Um, because I had a little flashback of making some ooch. So basically I put the, uh, made the ooch up and put it in a cupboard. So I'm gonna spin the camera around and this is a month later. Um, this will bring back a few memories, guys, because do you remember making ooch in prison? I mean, we had to hide it underneath our beds and in the locker, in the in the cloakroom of our coats over it, and hope that the screws wouldn't find it. Fucking absolutely, it was, we we lost more than what we actually drank. But you know, if we could get away with like two two bottles and lose like five bottles, it weren't too bad because we're still having a drink. But yeah, you know, I've got a little P, I've got a little bit of PTSD, guys. But it is funny when you think about it. So I've made one up now. So I'm going to spin the camera around and I'll show you where I'm at at the minute, guys. Yeah. So here's my bottle of ooch, yeah, in a lemonade bottle. Hello, Bruno. Right. Listen to this. Whoops.
Uh, what Bruno? What? That's, that's Bruno. Bruno said he wants to drop a vote. Uh, Bruno's got his own channel. Look. Fucking hell, he's got more exciting news than me. Say hello, Bruno. Say hello, YouTubers. Yeah. Say I love you all. Oh, that's fucking, that's, that's comical, that's class. But yeah, guys, that's me, Ooch. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I wish cameras had smell sense because I've stunk the whole flat out. It smells of beer in there. Funny as fuck, man. The bottle's, the bottle's swollen up a little bit, look. It's gone to like three times the size. Yeah, I was going fucking absolutely bonkers. Anyway, guys, thanks to all my subscribers, you know. I'm trying to upload different content all the time um, and not all about the same things because I know it gets a little bit boring. You don't want to sit there for like hours on end like hearing bullshit about crimes and what happened years ago because like, you know, t t things have moved on and, and I've moved on, times have moved on. So I'm trying to upload different content, guys, just to like give you, give you like a few jokes here and there and, and cheer you up. Um, but whatever you're doing, guys, please stay safe. Thank you very, very much for subscribing. Please don't forget to share and subscribe to keep my channel alive. Peace.